Introducing RimObjects Nougat. Oxygen is the general purpose programming language and environment designed to let you create all imaginable kinds of projects on the platforms you want. Oxygen is all about giving developers a native development experience on each platform to create the best app possible. You already know about Oxygen for .NET and Oxygen for Java and the great platform support they provide. Now I would like to tell you about the newest flavor of Oxygen, codenamed Nougat. Nougat gives you full access to the Cocoa and Cocoa Touch frameworks that make great OS X and iOS apps possible. Just like the other flavors, there are no forced abstractions to get in your way of making a great high-performance app. All three flavors use the same great Oxygen language you know and love, with all of the amazing features that make development a breeze, but with no baggage from the other platforms. Keep in mind that Nougat is still in beta, so some of the features are still under development. I'm going to show you Beta 3, which you will see is pretty far along. Nougat uses the same Visual Studio 2012 IDE as the other flavors of Oxygen. This gives you all the Oxygen productivity enhancements you're used to. Your apps have full access to the native frameworks and the Objective-C runtime, including automatic reference counting. Nougat also includes Crossbox, which bridges the gap between Visual Studio on Windows and your Mac and iOS devices. Crossbox is the bridge that allows you to do native Mac and iOS development from Windows. It connects Visual Studio 2012 on Windows to all of the native tools on your Mac. This is the real beauty of Nougat. Since you are using native Cocoa and Cocoa Touch user controls, you get to use the native designers. And since you are building a native application, you also get to use the Instruments Profiling tool. You get the best of both worlds, the language you love and the native tools you need. Let's take a quick look at Nougat in action. Just like with the other flavors of Oxygen, Nougat lives in the Visual Studio IDE. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new project. And you're gonna notice under Oxygen Nougat, we have templates for both iOS and Mac application development. Under iOS, you can create an application using storyboards, or what we're gonna do for our simple example here is create an application that uses a zip-based view controller. You're going to notice right here that our root view controller, which is the code behind the initial view the user sees, descends from UI view controller class. UI view controller class is the class that you would descend from in Objective C because it's the class for the Cocoa Touch framework that is your view controller. There's no abstraction in here, nothing that gets between our code and the framework. So we're going to have an application here that interacts with a text field and a label. So we're gonna add some outlets here to talk to those. And so we do that by creating a property. We give it whatever name we want to, my text. And we specify the type that we're gonna interact with. So we're gonna have a text field. Another property. And it's a UI label. So these are called outlets. And this is what allows our code to communicate with the view. So now we want to have an action. An action is the way we respond to an event from the view. And we do that by creating a method. And we can give it whatever, whatever name we want. And then the key is having the right signature. Sender of type ID. There we go. Now we've created two outlets and an action. So we're going to use code completion here to implement that method and write the code. So we're gonna say my label dot text equals hello my text dot text. And then we're also gonna add this line here, view dot end editing. And what that's gonna do is gonna have the keyboard go away because when you're done typing and you hit the button, the keyboard's gonna go away. That's it, we've implemented the code for our application. Now, you probably noticed we haven't actually created the UI yet. Now to do that, we're gonna come over here and our root view controller is attached to this root view controller zip file. We're gonna right click on this and we're gonna say sync zip and that's going to push in the outlets and actions that we just defined into that zib. And now we can edit that zib 
on our Mac and define the user interface. So let's go ahead and go over to our Mac and do that now. So now I'm on my Mac. This folder here in Finder is a network share that is accessible both from Windows as well as from the Mac. You could do this over Dropbox, you could do this over a virtual machine, shared folder, any mechanism that will give you access to those files in the Mac. So this is the rootviewcontroller.pass file that I was editing in Visual Studio, and this is the rootviewcontroller.zip file that I synced in Visual Studio. So all I need to do is double click on this file, and it opens up in Interface Builder. So this is the view surface that I can work on, and here's all my controls available to me. So all I need to do is add down a text field, a button, and a label. So go ahead and resize these a little bit here. So the cool thing about the fact that I'm using native Cocoa Touch controls here is that I have all of the properties available that are used in other Cocoa Touch controls and other apps. So that means I'm gonna have a consistent behavior across other apps on the phone. So for example, on my text field, I can set the capitalization to words, since I'm asking for someone's name, and turn correction off. So the cool thing is if when correction's on, then I get access to the system-wide dictionary that's gonna behave you know, in that consistent, consistent way. Also gonna go ahead and add a um, placeholder text here that says, what is your name? And then turn the clear button to always be visible. So it'll be visible as soon as there's text in there to be cleared out. So there we go, we've set up our user interface the way we want it to be set up but we haven't wired it to our root view controller yet. So there's two ways to do this. The first way, so if I come over here and select files owner, and I'm gonna come over here to the view here and see that this is, the identity of this is it's a root view controller is the class. Now that root view controller is the class that was defined in this Pascal file. So it's showing us that we are connected to our root view controller. So if I come over here to the uh, connections inspector, we can see here are the outlets, my label and my text I just created, and the action button touch. So now all I need to do is drag from here over to here. Now notice I selected my label. It won't connect to the text field or the button, but it only connect to the label. And that's because I specified the type as UI label. And the same is true for my text. I'll show you the other way of doing this for the button. On the button, I want to wire it to the button touch event. And so instead, I'm going to use the secondary click and drag over here to file owner and let go. And it says, this is the events that are available and I'm going to select button touch. And it's going to automatically connect button touch to touch up inside. Touch up inside is the default action for a button that if it's when you put your finger down inside the button and then let your finger up inside the button, touch up inside the button. So there we go, we've wired up the visual representation of the view to the root view controller, the code behind. So now we can save this and go back into Visual Studio and run our application. So now we're back in Visual Studio. Our root view controller zip file was updated from interface builder so we're ready to build and run our application now in order to build and run it we need to set up a cross box so when we click on this cross box drop down it will automatically discover any cross box servers on our local network now a cross box server is a um, machine that is running cross box a Mac that's running cross box so how do you install cross box on a Mac if you go to crossbox.me it'll have the download available as soon as Nougat is released. So right now, if you go there, it's not available, but it will eventually be available there along with instructions. So you just follow those instructions, install Crossbox on a Mac. If it's on your local network, it will discover it automatically when you click the drop down and list it here. If it's not, then you can say register server 
and that will allow you to specify a Mac on a remote network, all over the internet, in the cloud, wherever, and then connect to it from there. So then when you mouse over this, it's going to give you a list of devices that are on that server. So this is the default list you'll always get. If you're building a Mac application, this will be enabled and the other ones will be disabled. And this is what you would build to build, or you'd select this and it would build and run it on the Mac that's running CrossBox. Now, the other options, this one is for building for deployment. So it's going to build it for the ARM processor for deployment. These two will build for the x86 processor to run in the simulator, either the iPhone simulator or the iPad simulator. And then if you connect, so let's go ahead and select, let's go ahead and select iPhone simulator. And I'm going to attach my iPhone to my Mac. And if I go back into this menu now, we'll see that my iPhone is listed here as well. So if I wanted to build for and debug on my iPhone 4, I would select this option and it would build it and then debug it on my iPhone. We're going to stick with simulator, but I do want to show you how to provision. So if we come in here to project properties, in order to run on actual hardware, you have to provision it. If we go into the NuGet tab, and then from here we can select our provisioning profile name. Now, Crossbox has gone out and grabbed this information from Xcode, which grabs it from the developer portal automatically. So I don't have to remember any of this stuff. It's all done for me. And then I just select my certificate name. And now my app will be provisioned if I wanted to build it on actual hardware. And then also here is the architectures selection. By default, we're going to build a hybrid app that will run on both ARM v7 and ARM v7s. v7s is the new iPhone 5 processor. If we want to just build for one or the other, we can do that though. Most often you're probably going to want to stick with hybrid though. And then lastly in the review controller here, I showed you that we are descending from the UI view controller, but I also want to show you this here is an example of the split naming convention that's been introduced in NuGet. And this comes from Objective-C. Objective-C uses the split naming convention for when you have multiple parameters. So you'd read this as a knit with nib name root view controller bundle nil. So what this does is it turns a method call into a sentence. And then you know exactly what this is. So if it was just nil here, you would have no idea what you're passing to this if it didn't say bundle. So now we know the bundle's nil. But if bundle was gone and it was just passing root view controller and nil, we wouldn't know what those parameters meant. So this makes it more expressive, which fits really, really well with the Pascal syntax that Oxygen is based off of. Right here, this is the title of our root view controller. So I'm going to change this as well to say uh, nougat rocks. And that's just what's going to be displayed at the top of the view. All right. So we're all ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and run this in the simulator on my MacBook Pro. So Crossbox built it, deployed it to the simulator, and started it up for us. So we're ready to debug it here. So I'll go ahead and add my name. Notice it's going to automatically capitalize the first letter, which is that's what we told it to do. And if I add my last name, automatically capitalizes that. And it's not offering to autocorrect my last name, which I know is not the dictionary. So there we go. Hello, Jim McKeith. Keyboard went away just like we asked it to. So very easy to build and deploy your app to the simulator. The same thing would behave exactly the same way if you're we going to the, your hardware as well. And the great thing is you saw how quickly it deployed and started up. There's no extra run times in there or anything to bloat your application. So you have a nice, simple, as quick as possible native iOS application built with Oxygen Nougat. This is one of the samples that's going to ship with Nougat. It's called Browse 500. It's an app for browsing the 500 Pix website. It's actually available right now in the App Store on iPhone and iPad. You can check it out. Notice how fast it runs. You can get this right now on GitHub at github.com dwarfland browse 500. So you're probably going to come out here and bookmark this. 
so you can check it out and always get the latest version of the code once you have got your copy of NuGet. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Here again, you're going to notice it's descending from the UI table view controller because it's the root view controller is a table view. You can take a look at this. It also has uh, uses uh, zip files for both iPad and iPhone. So this is a universal app. So what I want to show you with this demo is this new button here. Start with instruments. This is uh, buttons not here by default, but you can add this to your menu bar. And what this is going to do is going to allow you to launch your iOS app or Mac app on your Mac via Crossbox and run instruments on it. Instruments is a profiling and leak detection tool. So let's go ahead and launch that right now. It's going to build it and deploy it onto my Mac. So there's a notification coming from Crossbox showing us what's going on behind the scenes. The icon right here is Crossbox that's running our system. And then we'll see the launch screen for instruments. You have a choice of different trace templates available to you here. You can also create your own over there. I'm going to go ahead and run the leaks template. And you can see it launches our app in the simulator right away and gets us going. So what we're looking at here is this graph is showing us allocations that we've made. So right here we have launch, this be when it connects to the network, pulls down some images and displayed the images. So then as we scroll here, we'll see that it allocates some more because it had to allocate more images. Now when I view this image, you'll see it allocates some more. Because I had to download the full image and display it. And then when I go back, you can see the allocation goes away. This app is behaving appropriately. If there were leaks allocations that were uh, the reference were being lost to, those would show up down here. Now because NuGet uses ARC, automatic reference counting, most likely you're not going to run into leaks unless you're doing something completely inappropriately. But if you're following good practices, thanks to ARC, you're probably not going to run into leaks in your application. But if you do, this instrument makes it easy for you to track those down. You can dive into more detail down below by looking at specific types of allocations, seeing which ones are uh, currently live overall, etc. Very powerful tool that gives you the ability to further improve your apps developed with NuGet because of the fact you're developing native apps on iOS or macOS. We hope you are as excited about NuGet as we are. Even though it is still in beta, it is already available for pre-purchase. NuGet comes with all three flavors of Oxygen in one package. You get the current version of Oxygen for .NET and Java, the beta of Oxygen for Cocoa for now, and the final version when it ships. That comes with the Visual Studio 2012 shell and all its enhancements, as well as Crossbox, the command line compiler, and Oxidizer, which makes it easy to migrate your legacy code to Oxygen. Learn more at rimobjects.com oxygen and pick up your copy today.